Hey friend, if you are looking for a grab and go kit, then this is a video for you. Etcher have very kindly gifted me their Etcher field case, which I have had my eyes on for such a long time. As you may know, I am a bona fide overpacker. However, that does mean that sometimes it takes me a really long time to pack or I get decision fatigue or I end up leaving my favorite pencil at home in the confusion. And so I wanted to use the Etcher Field case as the perfect solution to my problems by curating a grab and go set. And I'm gonna share with you everything that I have put inside it because I guarantee it's more than you think it is. So this is essentially going to be something that I'm able to literally take with me um, that is full of my favorites for urban sketching or just for creating art outside of my studio. My hope is that I am eliminating my future overthinking by doing all the overthinking now. <laughs> and I have tried doing this before with an even bigger case but I found one it's too big and two it's actually quite cheap so it's already started falling apart on me so sometimes when you buy cheap you buy twice which I am learning the hard way but anyway this video will feature my curated set that being said I love to travel and create art as I do and more often than not when I do so I take with me even more supplies specialized for traveling for long periods of time so if that's something that you're interested in or if you want to know tips and tricks for traveling with your art supplies, how to save money on your art supplies when traveling and so much more, then be sure to check out the videos that I will leave linked in the playlist down below for you. I will also leave my discount code down below in the description for you. And if you use my affiliate link as well as the code SCRUBS10, you'll get 10% off your Jackson's order. And that includes on sale items. So everything linked in the description. Let me unpack and highlight for you what it carries because it's more than I thought it could. Starting with the outside I have magnetic clips which are my my go-to's like I absolutely love them for urban sketching because not only do they hold my sketchbook open but because they have magnets on them they are able to hold my watercolor palettes my gouache palettes and even my new color two palettes in place nice and safely and then I also have um, a little water pot there and I think I, I tend to have two. So one has two pots, one has one pot. At the moment, I have that one pot. But once I find my two pots, I will <laughs> insert that at the bottom as well. And that also clips at the bottom securely. My Etcher field case, unfortunately, was broken, the strap. But Etcher have kindly um, agreed to replace that for me. So that's a good thing as well. As you may have spotted, I did drop some water onto the case itself. But it seems to be holding its own and just wipe straight off. I don't know if like in torrential rain, it will protect absolutely everything inside but at the very least like a light drizzle is going to be completely fine so again that's really reassuring because I live in the UK and it rains a lot moving on to the front and this is me like being completely completely extra but I have squeezed <laughs> I have squeezed my Neo Color 2s inside it because I love my Neo Color 2s and I really wanted to be able to carry them with me so they do just about fit but it is a squeeze. I will share my favorite colors that managed to make it in the coveted spot later on in the video. So moving on to the inside of the case these are my absolute essentials and do not get me wrong it was so hard narrowing out and narrowing down by excluding pencils and artist pit pens and everything else but I do find that these are technically my most used supplies and if I want to squeeze in maybe like another pencil or two I'll be able to. Being risky and having my brushes in the case because why not this first one is a flat brush that came free with Himi that I just really like because it's nice and firm and works well with gouache. Then I also have a round brush by Dana Rowley which is their like graduate mixed media brush and again is really nice and firm and I love for gouache. And then I have the Princeton Aqua Elite water color brush which I love for watercolors. Now in my studio I do tend to use the silver black velvet brush but I find that that is quite soft and holds a good amount of water which is fine for the studio but sometimes when painting outdoors I just find that I get better water control, better drying time and just better painting experience when I'm using the Aqua Elite so that's why it's one of my go-to's. And then I also have two travel brushes which are both by Rosemary and Co. 
Both of these have unique shapes. So this first one is the dagger brush and I absolutely love this for florals. In fact, it's in here purely for the times that I want to paint florals as opposed to like urban sketching as a whole. And then I also have the cat's tongue brush, which I tend to use less so, but sometimes it's just nice to experiment with different brush shapes. I do have another round brush that's not by Rosemary & Co. It's just like a generic one that I got from Amazon. And that is also another one that I'm going to add. And maybe when I add it, I'll remove one of the other brushes because that is an all purpose kind of round brush that I tend to use all the time. In a nutshell, if I had to narrow it down even further, I'd say that I would absolutely want a dagger brush, a round brush that's all purpose and a flat brush. And if I have these three brushes, then I can pretty much paint anything and everything that I want comfortably. And the others are just extra to improve the experience. So if need be, I'll remove two of these brushes in order to make space for a pencil. But for now, this is my setup that I'm absolutely loving. Then my favorite pencil is the Graph Gear 1000 Pentel pencil. It just feels so nice in the hand. It makes a sketch experience it's so nice I can't explain why I love this pencil just the fact that I absolutely love it for my pens I have the Lamy Safari pen with a converter that I have filled with carbon black ink which is waterproof it has a fine nib and it's still just one of my favorite pens it's nice because not only is it precise but if I want it to be I can be more expressive and more playful with the lines and with the lightweight line weights the ink doesn't bleed whenever I paint over it and it's just one of my go-to pens I also have a uni pin fine liner 0.2 size or i don't mind a 0.3 size as well and again it's waterproof but this just gives me a little bit more control should i want it this is essentially a paper towel that i got from a really fancy restaurant years ago so always be sure to keep an eye out my friends because some gems are actually free and I don't know, thinking about it just makes me smile because I remember my sister thinking I was crazy. But years on, like it's still paying off. I still have, I think, like two left because they last so long. And then behind here, we have my beloved watercolours, which believe it or not, I got ready and topped up, especially for you, because I was running out of quite a few colours. Almost all of them are Romish more, and I'm going to be swatching them out for you a little later, just in case you're interested in what colours I take with me. My colour choices do tend to change when I am going on holidays or small art trips, and it's all very much dependent on the colours I think I'm going to see, the things that I think I'm going to be inspired by, and ultimately the things that I think I'm going to want to create but it has been consistently like this for quite a while now and I think it won't change much until I go on holiday again or maybe winter will change it a little bit we shall see essentially I love creating curated palettes and this at the moment is my main go-to palette now as I mentioned I was running low on some of my colors which I'm going to be highlighting because I guess ultimately they are my most used colors but Romish Moore have the benefit of being soft enough that you can actually use a palette knife in order to scoop out half of the paint from the four pans and this is just a more economical way of buying paint and also of reusing paint so sometimes yes it is easier to just buy the half pans however if you wanted to then essentially you'd be getting double of the paint in a four pan for less as you can see there is minimal waste especially if you're using something metal like a palette knife and if you find that the paints are just way too sticky then I would probably advise that you stop put it in the fridge for a few minutes and then try again in terms of the colours that I had run out of and needed to top up for this video, the first one is Quinacridone Gold Hue, which I replaced with Roman Schmoll's Quinacridone Gold because I love both of them. Then I also replaced and topped up the Cherry Quin Red. Um, I need to replace the Quinacridone Magenta, which I don't have at the moment. So I'm going to get it in the Jackson sale, which I will link down below for you. And if you use my affiliate link as well as the discount code SCRUBS10 and happen to be lucky enough to be watching this video while the code and the link are still valid then you'll get an extra 10% off your whole order sell items included so I'll leave all of that linked down below in the description for you. The next colours that I topped up are my Ramish Moore Hooker's Green. I absolutely love this Hooker's Green to me it looks like a really nice sap green and then Aquarius Green which is one of my favourite greens of all time. <laughs> And then I also topped up Ultramarine Intense, my Core in Dance Room Blue and then my Etcher Gold because... Uh 
like the etcha gold is one of those colors that from the moment I swatched it till today like I have just been using it continuously in my art like it's just a color I haven't been able to put down behind here and I think this is the most surprising thing because I can also fit my gouache inside this field case so with regards to the gouache I'm still experimenting with what colors to have inside I have put a metal plate on there so that I am able to use my magnets with it which I absolutely love that setup but with regards to the colors I remember removed my Prussian blue because it kept cracking but I do love that color <laughs> instead I added a number of different blues like uh Windsor blue I still have primary blue and I think I also added Windsor green so just a number of different gouache colors um including Naples yellow to just try and experiment and see if there are certain different colors that I want to try adding to my main palette and I will link the video for you where I share all my gouache my rationale for buying different colors and essentially what I'm looking for down below for you if you're interested in that as well and that is pretty much it for the field case if I really wanted to I could remove the gouache palette and instead add like a little a6 sketchbook but as I prefer to work in larger sketchbooks I think it's just better for me to exclude that from there and just carry a sketchbook on the day that I'm going out or the paper but for now let me quickly chat you through my watercolor palette so that you can see all these beautiful colors and I can also chat through the the colors that I chose, why I chose them and the ones that I am thinking about replacing and changing as we head into winter. A lot of the colours are also included in the Roman Schmoll Urban Sketching Kit and I've done an entire swatching and review video which I will link for you as well. But starting things off we have Roman Schmoll's Buff Titanium and just assume it's Roman Schmoll unless I tell you otherwise. <laughs> I think that's probably easier. This is a lovely colour that I love to use not only for mixing in terms of like toning down colours but also for urban sketching. So although it doesn't feature much in my florals it is absolutely stunning and essential for me when I'm doing urban sketching outside. Side. Then we have Roman Schmoll's Quinoptolone Yellow, which is a super bright, beautiful, run of the mill yellow. Then quinacridone gold. I absolutely love both quinacridone gold and quinacridone gold hue. I do find that quinacridone gold hue granulates, whereas quinacridone gold does not. And I've made a whole video comparing the two together. So if that's something that you're interested in, in particular, if you are in love with PO48, which is getting discontinued, then I'll link that video for you so that you can look at the two and pick your favorite. Next, we have Roman Schmoll's beautiful golden ochre. And it is like a really nice, a warm, yellow ochre color that isn't semi-opaque or opaque like others tend to be so it's a little bit more transparent in all honesty I don't feel like I need to have both golden ochre and quin gold but as I have space for it at the moment that is one of the colors that's going to remain I may replace it in place for a warm red and I'll talk about that in a little bit um but then we have quinacridone magenta, which is again a color that I need to replace. And it's just absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. And it's so funny because initially it's one of the colors that's included in the Roman Schmoll Urban Sketching Palette. And initially I was quite confused as to why they would use such a bright color inside their Urban Sketching Palette. But it's one that I have absolutely loved for urban sketching as well as my florals. It's just a, a really bright and beautiful color that I go back to time and time again. Then a Roman Schmoll favourite, this is a Cherry Quinn Red, which is absolutely beautiful, stunning. I do really love like cool purpley leaning reds um, more often than not because it makes they make really nice peachy colours when mixed with my Quinn Golds, but also because they make beautiful purples and I love using purples. The only reason that I'm contemplating adding a warm red is that Sometimes if I need the colour, it's very hard for me to make something similar using the colours that I have available to me. Not impossible, just a bit harder. <laughs> then we have Roman Schmoll's Potter's Pink, which is just a beautiful granulating colour that honestly, I think this is the only the only potter's pink that I like like it's not a color that I am massively drawn to because I find a lot of them are quite brown whereas this is a beautiful pinky color then we have Daniel Smith cobalt teal and it's a nice granulating teal color it's I I almost want I want a non-granulating version of this so this is a color that I will probably be replacing as well following that we have Roman Schmoll's sky blue which is a perfect sky blue color and I thought was going to be chalky but it was not which is good 
<laughs> we then have Roman Schmoll's Ocean Blue, which is a stunning, stunning, stunning granulating blue that just has like bits of brown poking through as it dries. Definitely a color to keep an eye on. Then Roman Schmoll's Phalo Blue, because I love bright, punchy blues. And as you will see in this palette, there are plenty of blues. Um, we also have Roman Schmoll's Ultramarine Intense. Ultramarine just seems to be like a go-to color for me is just you know it's a workhorse it's a color that you can make great mixes with it's a color that will granulate um it's it's a go-to color and it's one that I was running out of as well then we have cause in Danthrone blue and I think I love in Danthrone blues as a whole like but the reason that core has remained in this palette is because it does add like a lot of <laughs> a lot of interest when painting with it because it will run across the pages and more often than not I will use it to make my greens as well so my greens are quite dynamic as a result then we have Roman Schmoll's Mineral Violet and I must admit this isn't a color that I'm using very often but it's one that I just can't seem to be able to let go of I just need to figure out how exactly I'm going to be using it then following that we have Roman Schmoll's Hooker's Green and this is one of my favorite greens to me it looks like what a sap green should be <laughs> and it's one of my go-to colors for my leaves and for my florals and just foliage in urban sketching as well so it's definitely one that's going to stay one of my absolute favorite greens for reasons unknown I skipped um, and I'm swatching now is Aquarius green and it's just stunning granulating moody and looks natural which is completely converse to this green which is <laughs> The Jackson's Phalo Green or Emerald Green, super bright, really lovely, complete opposite. And I just have that there to create like more turquoisey colours. Next to that, we have Roman Schmoll's Cypress Burnt Umber. And Burnt Umber mixed with Ultramarine Blue is the reason that I will never let go of this as Burnt Umber. <laughs> like I absolutely love it. Or actually, the, I may replace it with the new Benzimidazole Brown or one of the other Roman Schmoll's Burnt Umbers purely because it's a bit on the cooler side. Like it's a very muted brown and I want to have a warmer brown if that makes sense like a more reddish brown then we have shadow gray which is funny because if you'd asked me initially whether shadow gray would be a color that i would use i would have said no and yet it is one of the colors that i am almost running out of like it's a color that i keep using time and time again and subconsciously so i assume where i'm using it a lot of the time is to darken up some of my leaf colors so if i'm not using cause in Danthrin blue I'm leaning towards using shadow gray but it's a color that for reasons unknown I just keep going back to time and time again <laughs> then we have shabish gray which is chef's kiss beautiful beautiful granulating purpley gray that is just absolutely amazing and last but not least we have etcher's gold now I've run out of the etcher royal gold and I've added the etcher pure gold and I'm going to make my way through all the etcher golds <laughs> one by one by one but my absolute favorite was their royal gold and as I said I love all their entire set and I've swatched them out in a whole separate video which I will link for you just highlight some of my favorite neo color twos and it's hard to narrow down because the way that I use neo color twos is very much so to add accent colors so sometimes I use colors that I can see and just to like emphasize them a little bit and sometimes I use colors that are completely contrasting so an example of that is jade green i absolutely love using jade green i never see it out in nature <laughs> i never see it anywhere but it's just like a beautiful pop of color that i really enjoy adding to my paintings i've also really enjoyed adding like ultramarine blue to deepen and to add some interest to shadows a lot of the time and i have also loved using yellows and oddly enough and surprisingly perhaps because it's autumn the oranges as well the purple which to me looks pink is a color that i wish was just a little bit more opaque like neo colors more times than not you lay it down and you can see it on top of everything for reasons unknown the purple is never like that bright like it always gets a bit dull that's a color that i always pick up always try to use but then you can never actually see it 
Tell me in the comments what you have in your etch field case. Or if you don't have one, just what kind of art supplies do you tend to carry out and about with you? It's something that I am always very intrigued by. This is my mini mixed media etch field case setup. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit the like button and to consider subscribing as it makes a massive difference to this channel. But on top of that, if you enjoyed this video, then you will definitely love the series of next ones where I share my bigger full setup for going on art trips and art holidays. A super special thank you to Etcher for this amazing gift and a special thank you to you as well for watching and for all your support. I really don't take it for granted and it means more to me than you know. If you are still watching then let me know that you are a real MVP by saying Etcher field case in the comments and then I will know, you will know and everybody else will know that you are a real MVP. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I'll see you again next time. Bye.